Hey everybody, Dr. Shaw with the Upper Cervical Spine Center. Today I want to talk to you about cranial nerves. I've gotten some questions recently on why when we take pressure off the brain stem do things just work better? And we know in upper cervical care our results speak for themselves, but we need to back it up with science, right? And so that's what I'm going to do for you today. I'm going to give you lots of vocabulary and lots of science so we can show you exactly why upper cervical care works. As you can see with this diagram, cranial nerves 3 through 12 come right off of the brain stem. Now the brain stem in a living person comes all the way down to this second bone in the neck. These are the top two bones in your neck, the atlas and the axis. And since the cranial nerves come off of this brain stem, when we take pressure off of the brain stem due to an upper cervical misalignment, we can see things improve. Okay? For example, cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6. Cranial nerve um, 3 is the oculomotor nerve, 4 is the trochlear nerve, and number 6 is the abducens nerve. These are all nerves that innervate the muscles of the eyes. So, People with ocular dysfunction, for example. Uh, maybe you see a child and they've got what's called a lazy eye. When we take pressure off the brainstem, we relieve those nerves to the eyes and the eye muscles, and therefore the eye muscles start to work better and we see the ocular dysfunction go away. Cranial nerve number five is the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve has three branches that come across the face like this and when we see pressure on the trigeminal nerve, we see something called trigeminal neuralgia, a very, very serious pain condition that has been dubbed the suicide disease. It's so severe. And so when we take pressure off the brainstem, we see amazing results with those who experience trigeminal neuralgia. Cranial nerve number seven is the facial nerve. This nerve controls the muscles of the face. Maybe you've seen someone with uh, a condition called Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy is a condition where the facial nerve isn't working properly, and so half of the face, the muscles just aren't working. And so you'll see a drooping eyelid, or the patient can't smile properly. Um, maybe you've seen a stroke victim before. This is a, similar to what these people look like. Cranial nerve number eight is the vestibulocochlear nerve. Vestibulo means balance, and cochlear means hearing. So people who suffer from vertigo, hearing loss, uh, just hearing dysfunction in general, Meniere's disease, where we can take pressure off the brain stem and thus restore the flow of the vestibulocochlear nerve, we see these conditions go away. Cranial nerve number nine is the glossopharyngeal nerve. This nerve basically innervates the tongue and the throat and it's involved with taste and swallowing. Cranial nerve number 10 is the vagus nerve. This is the longest cranial nerve in your body. It actually goes all the way down to your gut tract. That's why when we take pressure off the brain stem with someone who may have interference to their vagus nerve, we see digestive issues go away. We see heart rate improve. We see breathing issues improve because the vagus nerve innervates all of these organs. It has a big job with the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest part of the nervous system. Cranial nerves number 11 and 12 all innervate muscles of the tongue and the neck. Cranial nerve number 11 is called the spinal accessory nerve. It innervates our sternocleidomastoid muscles and our traps. So patients who experience upper back pain, neck pain, they can't turn their head very well, they get muscle spasms in the neck a lot of times when we can take pressure off the brain stem, thus restoring the flow to the spinal accessory nerve, we see this type of condition improve. And cranial nerve number 12 is that hypoglossal nerve. Like I said, it innervates the tongue, and so patient can't move their tongue properly. Maybe they have dysfunction with their tongue. We take pressure off the brainstem, and things just work better. So I know that was a big lesson today, the science behind upper cervical care, and why when we take pressure off the brainstem and restore the nervous flow to our um, cranial nerves from the brainstem, we see things improve and we see just better function in general. So if you or someone you love are suffering from any type of condition that may have been said in this video today, please give our office a call at 704-588-5560. 
and we will find out if you have an upper cervical problem that can maybe help you with your condition. If you're not in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, please give us, our call, give us a call anyway, and I promise we will find an upper cervical doctor as close to you as possible. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a lot today, and you have an awesome day. All you need to know is that conventional medical care really just treats the effects of your condition. Drugs and surgery really just mask the symptoms. And although surgery can be warranted sometimes, very rarely is it needed. With upper cervical care, we find the cause of your condition by finding the misalignment in the top of the neck, putting pressure on your brainstem, which interferes with the messages between your brain and your body. Give our office a call today.